And now for something somewhat different. I heard the other day that Stefan Molyneux, YouTube philosopher extraordinaire, occasionally will shadow ban comments on his videos. That is to say, the person who makes the comment thinks that everyone else can see it, but only they can see it. And I thought, well, that seems consistent with his personality and business model. That is somewhat believable. And oh, wait, could, uh, would he? No, yes, yes, he would. See, about a year ago, Molyneux put up a video called The Great UFO Debate. Yes, really. Every now and then he will share a portion of his call-in shows that he thinks presents him in a good light. So he will spend an hour making someone look stupid and then pat himself on the back for it and say some nice words about philosophy. And at the time, as now, I was very, very, very unemployed. And so I was on YouTube at the moment that he posted this video. And I thought, well, you know, I'll, I, I should take this opportunity. I should write up my response and post that comment. And maybe it'll be in early enough that it'll get some likes and float to the top and people can have a few helpful leads for their own research because I'm sure that this is going to be an embarrassing train wreck. And I, I typed up everything I had to say and then watched the whole video and as I recall don't really didn't have anything to add to it. Um, I think that uh, he psychologized a bit more than I was expecting trying to figure out what was driving this caller to be interested in something that Molyneux himself had never attempted to learn. But by and large, my instincts were not disappointed. And it is a pretty sad affair. Anyway, it wasn't a brilliant comment, but I thought it had some value. And about six months later, I remember recalling this debate and thought I should check in to see if anyone had replied to what I had said. Maybe I would learn something. And I scrolled through all the comments and found mine, and there wasn't so much as a dislike on it, not a like on it, nothing at all for paragraphs and paragraphs of commentary that was one of the first dozen comments on this video. So I thought that was weird, but I thought, well, maybe I'm not as smart as I think I am, and maybe I don't have anything to contribute to this debate. Fast forward to today, it occurs to me to log out, to search for that video, and then look for my comment. And lo, it isn't there. I've gone through it a couple times. Maybe I missed it. Maybe it will miraculously appear subsequent to this video. I doubt it. No, it looks like my long, thoughtful response to Molyneux's rhetoric was excised for whatever reason. So that being the case, I'm going to read it out now and leave it at that. Almost anyone with an informed opinion on the complexities of UFOs, 9-11, or other subjects never broached here outside flights of condescending rhetoric, know that they would be wasting their time calling in. When Steph believes he has nothing more to learn about a subject, he jumps right into the logic. But logic is only as good as the knowledge you plug into it. Charles Fort's cataloging of flying anomalies in the papers a hundred years ago, Jacques Vallée's statistical analyses of many thousands of sightings, Stanton Friedman giving the same lecture for 40 years 
because there have been no substantive arguments against it. What about the photographs and radar returns? Jets scramble to shoot down objects that vanish or fly away impossibly fast. Nuclear missiles shutting down as a UFO hovers over a base. These things are documented. The Honorable Paul Hellyer is a kook. Dr. Edgar Mitchell was a bit of a kook too. Maybe that just proves that this is a kooky subject, with a lot of kooky people around it. You can try to psychologize a person's motivations for being interested, but it doesn't make the data go away. Quote, I think Bigfoot is blurry. That's the problem. <laughs> it's not the photographer's fault. <laughs> Bigfoot is blurry. And that's extra scary to me because there's a large out-of-focus monster. Unquote. The rational has to make room for the irrational. The little monkey brain has to accept that it can't encompass all creation within its paradigm. How could it? The funny thing is, if you were to catch up with the paranormal zeitgeist and listen to Greg Bishop, Tim Banal, Soraya Azkath, the guys at Mysterious Universe, if you were to read Gordon White, Jeff Kripal, Josh Cutchin, Mike Cleland et al., you would discover that they spend much of their time bemoaning how embarrassingly stupid and ridiculous UFO culture is. To boil it down to their main point, unidentified flying object doesn't necessarily mean space aliens. If we're really playing the philosophy game, Stefan might have pointed this out. Instead, the data was tossed out along with the interpretation. There's a squirming baby in a pool of bathwater on the ground. In fact, the extraterrestrial hypothesis, ETH, is spoken of very disparagingly in some circles. It's considered outdated and inadequate. That moves the conversation about UFOs into phenomenology, psychology, shamanism, mythology, religion, metaphysics, and a myriad of other interesting topics. And away from ignorant, arrogant, scientistic pedantry or credulous faith. So that was what I said then, and again, I still can't really add anything to it. It should be said that the person Molyneux was talking to raised good points, but didn't string them together into the kind of coherent argument that Steph was looking for, but nor did the philosopher make any attempt to meet him halfway. He knew ahead of time that this was going to be an hour of smugly looking down on a dummy. And so that is, that's what we all got out of it. Whoopee. Now, I get it. I really do. The paranormal and UFOs in particular are weird and scary. They upend our expectations for the world. They are severely disruptive on a personal as well as social level. So Molyneux has every reason to be resistant and reticent and not want to go there. I just wish that he didn't simultaneously adopt a pose of moral superiority for his own unwillingness to do the work. There is more to being a philosopher than being right. Sometimes the highest wisdom is knowing what you don't know.